Hi, welcome to Sisterhood Sessions. Join us on the couch every Thursday to talk about love, dating, happiness, and everything in between from a Gen Z and a millennial perspective. We are your internet sisters and we are all about entertaining, motivating, and inspiring you. Now let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about stepping out of your comfort zone. Yeah, we're going to be talking about essentially identifying ways that you can step out of your comfort zone, um, steps you can take to make it easier, how to deal with the fear of failure and imposter syndrome, and then we're going to tell you about our journey starting this podcast. Exciting stuff. So exciting. All right. So kind of identifying what makes you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's such a personal thing, mm -hmm. but there's little things, there's big things. Like for me, one thing I need to work on is learning how to dine at restaurants alone. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people love doing that once they get used to it, but that terrifies me. It's so funny because it's actually one of my favorite things to do. I know. <laughs> Um, it's something like ever since I was a teenager, I've always loved doing things on my own. Mm -hmm. And I look, I, I'm not an introvert, um, but I do require a lot of like personal time to recharge my batteries. Um, and as a teenager, like if I went to the beach, like I would go on my own with a good book or like my favorite music. Um, I would go watch movies by myself at the cinema. It's awesome. Like it's, <laughs> I love people watching. I love, you know, just having that peace and quiet and I kind of view it as like rewarding myself in a way. So it's really like, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. See, I get, that like spooks me. <laughs> I love going like shopping alone. Mm -hmm. I hate shopping with people because I feel like I'm just wasting their time if I'm trying things on I can just focus on myself mm -hmm. when I'm buying clothes doing whatever doing Christmas shopping whatever it may be running errands don't really like to do with other people either but it depends the gym I love doing alone mm -hmm. going to the beach going to the movies it's terrifying <laughs> I, I really want to go to the movies alone though yeah. Sometime soon. Especially now we have like VIP theaters in the city. I'd get like a little love seat to myself just to recline, watch the screen. It could be a good time solo. It could be. So I think one of the important things to do when you're thinking about stepping outside of your comfort zone is identifying those little things that, that make you uncomfortable. Um, because eventually what we're sort of aiming for is feeling comfortable enough to take on those big things mm -hmm. you know and so whatever that may be for you whether it is dining solo at a restaurant or whether it's like asking for help when you're in a store or I don't know like for me a, a big one that that I struggle with is when I'm at the gym like I always go to the women's only section mm -hmm. and I feel super uncomfortable if I have to go like pick up weights in the general area or whatever. It's so daunting. I moved from my gym to a female dominated one because mm -hmm. it felt more comfortable being surrounded by so much testosterone. Mm. It's scary. Um, I still prefer the women's only section mm -hmm. and I only go to the main workout room if there's very few other people there mm. but it's a scary thing yeah totally so i think um there are little things like the ones we've just mentioned there are also big things that mm -hmm. we can work towards challenging ourselves to conquer like new creative pursuits and passion <laughs> projects but definitely also new jobs you might be you know one. settling at the current job you're at because you're comfortable but maybe there's another job which you're qualified enough to do that'll pay you more mm -hmm. but it's just it's scary to take that step well it's a twofold thing right getting a new job it's one you know kind of coming to terms with the fact that you know maybe you can do 
something more or something better or something you know more Im- impressive to you or it's also like that first hurdle of going to a job interview mm-hmm. that's super scary and we both actually <laughs> went through that recently and like you were texting me like on your way going like I'm freaking out I don't know if I can do this and yeah well the first one I went to it was just it was a job that I was not qualified for like if I'm being honest but I had so many people tell me to go and interview and that I would kill it I would do great I would I was the perfect fit like look what you accomplished here you could so do that there the reality was I was not qualified enough and if I were to go there I would learn quickly but it would still require them to teach me Mm -hmm. and not everyone not every workplace wants to have to teach a new Mm. person how to do things so it was out of my out of my reach and so I felt super uncomfortable going to the interview Mm -hmm. but I conquered it it ended up being like easier than I expected but it's still like the initial nerves Mm. but you just have to do it you have to get out of your head be like I'm in this now whether it's yeah going to the gym don't even think about it just put workout clothes on grab your bag grab your water bottle grab a gym lock go (laughs) (laughs) okay I'm going Uh, (laughs) um I think Another thing to remember is not to compare yourself to others when you're thinking about what might be challenging to you when something might seem like the easiest thing in the world to another person. Mm -hmm. Because in the way that it is incredibly difficult for me to uh, think about doing something super simple to someone else, um, like going to university you know that's just like a standard thing that they will do to me that's like the most terrifying thing something that to me is second nature and super easy is moving to another country (laughs) and some like for I think for the majority of people like it's something unimaginable you know it's terrifying I oh my god the thought of me doing that it's it sounds so enticing and I can't wait to someday be able to do that Mm -hmm. oh oh my god (laughs) what that would require from me I would just be shaking in my boots Mm -hmm. (laughs) at the thought of like moving across the country moving across the waters to a new country Mm -hmm. oh my god but see that yeah that's that's the thing so now I guess like never ever compare yourself and what you're worried about what never compare stepping outside of your comfort zone to like what that means for somebody else but also these people like let's take the gym for example you may be super scared to take that first step to go and you're like how does everyone else there make it seem so easy Mm because they already took that first step they did months or even years ago so they were in the same boat as you just at a different time Mm -hmm. just get up and go otherwise you, you won't get it done totally you know, if if not now then when is something i think we've both really yeah. thought about i think um it's a it's it's important to think about like in terms of learning how to step outside of your comfort zone it's important to think about what are those things what are those initial barriers that mm-hmm. are keeping me from trying new things that I might want to do so like what what some what are ways that you know you've gone about stepping outside of your comfort zone I mean I think some of the initial initial fears are fear of failure you know the fear of being embarrassed Mm -hmm. in whatever you're going into gosh I don't stepping outside my comfort I mean Really, it's about, for me, getting out of my head, mm. which, easier said than done. I feel like I'm saying this every single episode. Every, everything is easier said than done. But when it comes to going to a job interview that I know I'm not qualified for, but, you know, just going and getting that experience out of the way, it's just game face on, can't think twice about it. Also, my background is in acting, so kind of just, like, switching that on in my head, like, it's an acting role. We're doing this. I'm not Sarah. I'm this other person. 
<laughs> but you know, just like whatever I can to get myself out of my head, because ultimately, ultimately, I think that's what'll keep you comfortable and at a standstill. Mm. If you let things like just build up in your head. Mm. Once again, or I mean, blah, 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 English. Um, anxiety is a very, very real thing. Yeah. And that can obviously hold you back. But even taking the first step as, you know, getting professional help or a life coach to help you break over barriers in that sense mm-hmm. is something people can do. I think that's super good advice. Depending on how much you struggle with the anxiety of doing new things and getting out of your own way, essentially, getting that professional help, whether it is seeking out therapy, whether it is seeking out a life coach, those are really important steps if they're really what you need. And those people are probably best equipped to give you the tools that um, you require to, you know, do the things that you want to do. So... I'll share a little bit about my story is I have lived my life absolutely plagued by the fear of failure, absolutely plagued. And it has held me back from doing so, so many things. Um, I think for me, it really started in high school um, because I was naturally gifted academically um, and it being at school was easy for me. I like to tell this story because it's still unbelievable to me, but essentially in year 12 or grade 12, um, we had a, uh, I was in a French extension class. It's a class, uh, it's, it's French, but for native speakers essentially, or people who are somewhat fluent. Um, and the exam was based on a book that we had studied for the entire year. I never read the book. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like my high school experience to a T. I never read the book. And I got 100% on the exam. And I uh, was awarded a gift from the premier of the state of New South Wales (laughs) for coming first in the state. Um, And I'm not saying this to toot my own horn. This is where the issue started right? Because I never learned to study. Mm -hmm. I was never in a position where I had to work really hard to obtain a goal, right? Just because I'm not saying I'm good at everything. I'm just saying school was easy for me. After graduation, when I got to university, I was totally unprepared, completely unprepared. I was like a fish out of water. I, you know, was in class, I hadn't done the reading material because I've never had to read anything. Well, you know what I mean? Like I've never had to prepare and suddenly I'm behind and suddenly everybody else is ahead of me and everybody has these amazing routines that they've got down. Everybody knows exactly, you know, what they're doing and I'm sitting there going, this is the first time in my life where I feel, holy, like I, I'm not good at something. Mm -hmm. And so rather than, you know, tie up my shoes, pull up my chin and get to work, I quit. I quit and I went to university four separate times and I dropped out four separate times because I didn't have the tools and I was so, so scared of failing that it was better for me not to try. If I didn't try, it wouldn't result in a failure. And I lived my entire life up till now, essentially saying no to opportunities because I didn't think I was good enough because my confidence was completely shot. I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not anything enough to be successful at something other than what I already know how to do, which is serve at a restaurant. That's how I lived my entire life up till now. And I'm in my 30s now. So digging myself out of that hole has been... Terrifying. Terrifying. But it's also been a revelation. Mm -hmm. It's been... It's been a crazy journey of, of starting small, taking those baby steps of making... Like putting little... I have little post-its 
in my room where I have like the things I need to do and some of them are really easy and some of them are really hard. And then I also have lists that I make every morning. And I think lists are a huge, huge asset when you are someone who is chronically worried about tackling things and you're a chronic procrastinator. Like writing lists and then taking them off. Even if my list says, have a shower, have breakfast, walk the dog, do your laundry. Because now I am actively like seeing that I can do those things. If I can do little things, I can do big things. I had kind of a similar high school experience slash college experience to you, but I think with a different underlying fear. So I was like the same thing. I, I'm not, you know, book smart. That's not how I would describe myself in any sense. I don't know words. Um, I can't, I don't read. I should, I like to, I just, (laughs) TikTok, (laughs) TikTok, Gen Z. Um, but I was always good at school as well, especially creatively in like elementary school and then even into high school where I didn't read a single book. Spark Notes was my best friend, if you know, you know. Um, but I would just, when it came to like essays in my philosophy class, I hope, I hope my teacher doesn't see this. Love you. <laughs> um, but I would pick essays like happiness to write about mm-hmm. where I would, it would require very little studying because I would just make the biggest chunk of my essay me giving my own idea and perception of what happiness is. I would, of course, throw like a few like little comments and quotes in there from philosophers, but ultimately I would choose things like love, happiness, so I could just say, oh, this is what I think of it. Mm -hmm. This is how I perceive it. Maybe other people can perceive it like this, but like I would just BS my way through everything. Mm. And I graduated with decent grades. They would be better if I could put the time into studying, but ultimately like I didn't have the discipline and I like I I would procrastinate everything. And then I started college as well. I only did one semester. Realized I have undiagnosed ADHD. Um and I was like, "Huh. I can't do this." <laughs> but I also just went into post-secondary school cuz I felt like I had to. Cuz I was scared to go against the grain. Hmm. Everyone else was going to school. Everyone else had these big plans of going to university, what their careers were going to be after the fact. I knew I, like, acting. I love acting. I've been doing acting since I was 10 years old. I wanted to keep with that. But also, being in Vancouver, I was like, how realistic is that going to be? So I felt like I needed a fallback of some sort. School. Business. That's the safe choice. You can go everywhere everywhere with that. I like, I dropped out cause I just, I wasn't fit for it. And I was, my underlying fear was the scared of like being embarrassed or being judged. Like, I still have that fear that I'm overcoming every single day. I'm someone that loves being on camera. <laughs> I've always loved it. Like I've started acting when I was 10 cause I would be on stage at my elementary school plays. Like I would just, I don't want to say that I love being the center of attention, but I, I love being on camera. I love main inter- character energy. I love entertaining. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of yeah. the way I want to put that. Mm-hmm. And But it can be terrifying. Like whether it's posting yourself online, the fear of judgment from others mm-hmm. has held me back. Mm-hmm. Not entirely, but more than it should. Mm-hmm. And so still every single day in my head, it's doesn't matter if you're cringy. It doesn't matter what people think of you. It matters what you think of yourself. And if you don't, you know step over those boundaries you'll never get to your end goal Mm -hmm. being whatever that is so just absolutely just post that instagram post post that tiktok whatever people whatever people might think yeah just doesn't matter don't think about it absolutely so i think just to recap on some of the ways to get over the fear of failure that have really helped the both of us it's start small Mm -hmm. start with the baby steps uh, get therapy or a life coach if you feel that... I love therapy. Putting it out there. Absolutely. No, but if you feel that that's, that's what helps you. Making lists, like daily lists that you can tick off. Um, focus on the end goal. Mm-hmm. 
I think another really important thing is surround yourself with people that you think are really brave and people who inspire you. Mm -hmm. So people who are going to like make you want to step out of your comfort zone because they are. And it's cool to be around people who challenge you like that. And then the final one, which we haven't mentioned yet, which I think is a really great one, and it's helped me a lot in the past, is getting an accountability buddy. So I, I'm a master procrastinator, and I would ask my best friend, Samui, she <laughs> loved the shout out last time, so I'm <laughs> shouting her out again. Um, I would send her a text with what I was going to do that day. And she would text me like throughout the day being like, hey, have you done this yet? Have you done that yet? How far along your list are you? And because I wasn't capable of being accountable for myself at that time, it was really great to have somebody, somebody else check in and somebody else kind of like, yeah, keep me on my toes. And it got me through that period in my life where I really wasn't mentally capable of doing that for myself. So accountability, account, wow, that, that's hard to say. <laughs> accountability, buddy. <laughs> I feel like that's what we are for each other with yeah. this whole thing. We both had the idea of doing something in the online creative content creation space realm, but we both didn't know where to start, kept or kind even, of procrastinating it, yeah. putting it off, and then we both just kind of had the idea of, this with like we can do that together and having the idea and setting our minds doing this together we've actually been able to start it that's why we're here chatting with you exactly and I remember you know we were talking about this in our friendship episode like when we first met and stuff and we were sitting in that little pub having a glass of wine and you were telling me that one of your dream jobs or one of your passions is content creation and I was like oh, me too. <laughs> and so, you know, we discussed it and it was always in the back of my, our mind, like, how are we going to do this? And then the more we spoke to each other and the more we discussed things and the more we realized, like, we vibe together really, really well, um, we thought, well, why don't we do it together? Like, there's bound to be something we could do together, <laughs> right? Um, and it was, it was like a little light bulb went off and... I've started a ton of projects, none of which have come to fruition before this one. And I think the stars aligned for the both of us in the sense that we met, we had a similar passion. Um, and when we started working together, we, because we felt a sense of responsibility for the other person involved, it kept us on our toes despite both of us, you know, not necessarily being really good at doing things on our own. Mm -hmm. um, and we started small. We started with the baby steps, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking about what do we want this to be? What do we want to call it? You know, what, like, what, what would we talk about? And then we also just kind of realized the chats we were having after work while having a glass of wine at this little pub there's like we were learning so much from each other and mm -hmm. talking about so much stuff we we're like well if i were to be the viewer and someone were to put like a camera record us having this conversation i would want to tune in yeah well hopefully you do <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> please tune in <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then once we got those little steps out of the way and it started to feel more real, we realized we're a little bit out of our depths here because mm -hmm. we have no idea really what's required. And so what we did next was we asked for help mm -hmm. and we reached out to our network. Friends, family, people in between everybody and it was amazing to realize how many people in our lives were able to help us in their own ways mm -hmm. right we had friends who were in content creation who were able to help us with figuring out like how to edit um <laughs> thank you matt <laughs> 
And then we had friends who, you know, worked in business and accounting and had set up businesses before. Thank you, Dougie and Corey, <laughs> um, who were able to help us with. And my mom and her dad. Yes. Um, thank you, parents. Thank you, parents, um, who were able to help us with, you know, the, the businessy side of things. And then there was all this other stuff, like, what equipment do we need? Like, what? So much to think about. But we kept chipping away at it. And us also being two broke servers. <laughs> How do we afford all these things? There were so many, like, walls that we needed to break down. And at times it felt like hopeless and my favorite story about the one wall that we ran into <laughs> it was so incredible we um we needed a camera <laughs> if you're watching this instead of listening hello <laughs> we needed a camera and we wanted a very specific camera which had a very specific price and you know we we'd been saving up and we'd been thinking about okay how are we like how are we going to come up with this this money on relatively short notice and we get to work one day and we're sat down and the owners of the restaurant basically said um we can't afford rent and we're closing and all you guys get a five hundred dollar incentive to stay to the last day so we'd like you know We'd been thinking about how to save and like all these unexpected expenses came up and we're sitting on this very couch um, and we're thinking, okay, do you have a credit card? Do you have a credit card? Um, can... Neither of us have credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell everybody that. But no. <laughs> I have a Coho card if you guys want to sponsor me. <laughs> um, and we're like calling, you know, our mom. We're like, hey, like if we want to buy this camera online, like can can you help or whatever can we borrow a camera from someone we're like going through all these things and we're like so demoralized and sitting there and then i go sitting there and i go sarah <laughs> the bonus <laughs> and we look at each other and it's this like light bulb moment where it's like literally a few days before the exact amount that we're both getting is equal to the amount that the camera was going to be and we started hysterically laughing like hyenas. <laughs> it was like... It was so funny. The fact that so it didn't funny. occur to us sooner. But it was just like the perfect moment. We'd spent like an hour just being like messaging people. Do you have a camera? Looking at renting websites for cameras and film equipment. We're like, what do we do? What do we do? But that's the cool thing because, you know, it's... It's just... No. <laughs> but I love that story because it's a story about, you know, perseverance through all of these obstacles that were thrown our way and we never gave up. Mm -hmm. We just kept pushing forward. Well, we could have. There were literally so many obstacles and some we can't even get into. But there was just, there was so much going on at any time. We could have been like, this is too much. This is out of our reach. Yeah. But we both had the passion to do something in this realm. And we're like, I think we can do something here. Yeah. We both had that thought and we just. And you, you said this earlier, but I love this sentiment so much. And it's so important. It's if not now, when, mm -hmm. you know, at what point do you sacrifice your dreams? Do you keep sacrificing your dreams because you are in your own way? You know, move out of your own way. I spent the majority of my adult life just getting in my own way and being in my head and being too worried about what other people thought and being too scared to take the first step into something new. And it's not necessarily that I regret the way that I've lived my life. I'm super proud of my my life and it... it it's cliche but it has made me the person that I am today and it frankly is giving me it has given me a lot of stories that I'm yet to share with you all <laughs> um, tea time tea time but yeah I think I'm like I'm ready now I'm finally ready and I'm finally seeing the fruits of my labor 
And I'm very grateful to you because it took meeting you to, you know, give me that final kick up the bum. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep it clean here. <laughs> I'm glad I met you. That She does most of the talking, so. <laughs> Do I? No, it's not a bad thing. She has more stories and more life wisdom. If it was just me, this would be nothing. No, that's not true. <laughs> you have a lot to say, too. A lot of rambling to do. But without you, well, without either of us, this wouldn't be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you guys are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it. I almost left you hanging there. That would have been sad. Awkward. Yeah. In any case, we really hope this has been helpful and we hope that, you know, you can take what you need from this and maybe this is your sign to do what you want to do and, and to push yourself and take those baby steps or take those big steps and see where you end up because there's so much opportunity out there. And there will be so many uncomfortable steps along the way, but just persevere. You don't grow without going through uncomfortable moments. And life is about growth at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? So just take that job opportunity, take that step. If you've been wanting to do something, just go for it. Move to a new city, move to a new country. Take yourself out to dinner. <laughs> I should do that. You really should. <laughs> Bad at a nice I'll, I'll restaurant be... where rich men across the bar can Stop. I'm anyway. a 21 year old and I would like for a man to buy me dinner. Well, that's, that defeats the purpose of a solo dinner. Okay, but I can go solo and if some <laughs> nice dude tells whoever, like, Ugh, I want to pay her tab. Nice. <sighs> Who doesn't love a free dinner? <laughs> Sorry. Fair enough. I'm speaking facts. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, get out, of, get out of your comfort zone Yeah. when you can. It's, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's in the name. It's in the phrase, but... It's in the name. Anyway, let us know in the comments um, what you're going to challenge yourself with. We'd love to know. Go Tell to, us your stories. Yeah. Go to the gym. Go to a restaurant. Start painting and selling it, selling it on eBay. Release, release your music. Ooh. And let us, give us the link. Yeah, we want to listen. We really do. <laughs> I love new things for my playlist. Very true. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate your input, so feel free to reach out to us with any feedback, comments, or suggestions for future episodes. If you would like to support us, please be sure to leave us a rating and review on your favorite platform and subscribe so you never miss us. See you next week. Toodles. <laughs> <laughs>